Come now. Touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadow. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. Hello everyone. The trailer for Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Erd Tree finally released. I guess everyone wants to learn about the Land of Shadow, Mesmer the Impaler, and other new elements and characters appear in the trailer. So, in this video, I will bring you the most comprehensive analysis of DLC based on the trailer. First, we need to know the time and location of the DLC story, and what the story would talk about. As we know from the Famitsu interview, just like the Erd Tree is the symbol of the lands between, the Shadow Tree is the symbol of the Land of Shadow. One of the main plots of DLC is the past of the Land of Shadow and the past of Marika. Like we follow the guidance of Grace in the base game, in DLC we will follow Miquela's footsteps and travel to the Land of Shadow. The timeline of DLC is neither the distant past nor the future, but is the same as the base game. But the Land of Shadow is not the spirit world. According to the IGN interview, the Land of Shadow used to be connected to the lands between, and now it has become physically disconnected from the main land. In the Famitsu interview, Miyazaki also said that the curtain in the air symbolizes the Land of Shadow has been disconnected and hidden from the lands between. By a cursory comparison, we can notice that this curtain is highly similar to the drapery of Marika's bedchamber. It is possible that the disconnect between the Land of Shadow and the Lands Between is closely related to Marika's past. The interview also reveals that you must defeat both Mog and Radon to enter the DLC. Compared to defeating Mog, the condition of defeating Radon is of more concern. In fact, the stars sealed by Radon and the destined death have the same connotation. Amiai, or fate, Perhaps Miquela's fate has also been sealed by Radon. Furthermore, in the game's 1.0 version, the explanation of destined death is to protect one from accidental death, but not to allow one to live a moment longer. And these two things were sealed away for the establishment of the Golden Order, which can be seen as Marika's resistance to the fate. As the Golden Order took full control of fate, Marika also made a preparation to change the order itself in the future. From this thinking, it might be fair to say that the reason of Marika's behavior is not so confusing. She has a clear idea for her to follow. According to Miyazaki, the way of narrating the Land of Shadow and Marika's past is very close to the way how the history of the Shattering is narrated in the base game. The size of the open field in DLC is comparable, if not larger, than Limgrave. And in the game, the region of Limgrave is inclusive of the Weeping Peninsula. The size of DLC is reflected here. Miyazaki also mentioned that the subtitle Shadow of the Erd Tree has a more hidden meaning, which we need to explore in the gameplay. Based on the trailer, the various elements in the Land of Shadow should be built around the concept of destined death. According to finger reader Enia, the Rune of Death goes by two names, the other is destined death. The forbidden shadow, plucked from the golden order upon its creation. The main part of this video is to explore this hidden theme. Let's start with the cover character for the DLC, Mesmer the Impaler. This character's position is quite important. According to the Famitsu interview, Mesmer is identified as a child of Marika, like Rikard and Millennia, and also holds the status of a demigod. The elements of his personal crest can be summarized simply as two-headed serpent and flame. The crest itself was designed to resemble the anchor ring. The center section has flames on the left and intertwined circles on the right. This circle might resemble a cut item or two intertwined snakes. After exposing this image, we can see that the statue behind Mesmer has Marika's armband and the floating belt. This Marika statue makes the action of holding a baby in her arms, which cannot be seen in the base game. It could be an indication of Mesmer's origin. In the plot of base game, those who hold the anchor rings are the demigods from Golden Lineage. Although Miyazaki called Mesmer as Child of Marika, he does have a red hair. 
It makes us question his pedigree. The source of his demigod status could be a very worthwhile part of future discussion. In addition, Mesmer's presence might explain an enduring question in the plot of the game. In the ritual combat held to honor the Erd Tree, the attire of gladiators is often decorated with snakes. Because the audience delighted in seeing these bronze effigies beaten and battered, for the snake is viewed as a traitor to the Erd Tree. The discussion of this event has been limited to the betrayal of the Glomide eyed Queen or the immortal Great Serpent. Now with the presence of Mesmer, a demigod full of the elements of serpent, this betrayal seems to have a whole new space for interpretation. No matter whether Mesmer himself was truly treacherous to the Erd Tree, most of the techniques he used are blasphemous to the Golden Order. First of all, the flame that Mesmer wields is extremely close to the black flame used by the Glomide Queen Force. The black flame is a combination of flame and destined death. Meanwhile, Mesmer's process of igniting the flame is, first gathering the black shadow of death in his hands, then emitting the red color of destined death from it, and finally igniting a huge flame. Mesmer's flame is the same igniting way as the black flame. In the game's 1.0 version, the black flame unleashed by the Godskin Apostles is also colored red and black, and directly shows the crest of giant's flame. It confirms the idea of this death and flame combination. In the Volcano Manor, a godskin noble is guarding the serpent's amnion, the product of the Manserpent's birthing ritual. The godskin noble has a snake tail feature. The serpent element in Mesmer was even more pronounced. Mesmer and godskin apostles have so much in common on strength and culture. We have to assume Mesmer has substantially embraced the legacy of Glomide Queen, the Empyrean who once competed with his mother Marika. Starting with the serpent element of Mesmer, we can then introduce a lot of forgotten religions of the base game. Mesmer's serpents have two characteristics, double head and flying wing. Malformed bow in the shape of a pair of poisonous snakes. Imbues arrows with poison through pagan magic. Used by assassins known as the formless serpents. Arrow Kive to resemble a flying snake used in tandem with the serpent bow. Loyal minions of the formless serpents, their fangs are daubed with deadly poison. This corresponds to the pagan belief in formless serpents, and the key to activating such power lies in the jujitsu or hex. The magma sorceries developed by Rikard is derived from the forgotten hexes of Gelmir. In Elden Ring, the casting of hexes commonly requires a living sacrifice. A heretical staff fashioned from a smoldering, withered sapling that turns the blood of sacrifices pierced by it into glint stone. Similar to hex magic. Hatchet used in ancient sacrificial rite, a death bird is depicted as a malevolent deity. The power of the rite yet lingers. Ceremonial tool used by dancers during the festivities of Dominula, Windmill Village. Crafted from human bone. Curved sword fashioned in the image of an ancient serpent deity and tool of a forgotten religion practiced on Mdjelmir. Formerly used to offer up sacrifices. The flaying rituals of the Windmill Village, the Serpent God Sacrifice, and the Death Bird Sacrifice are all replete with the elements of rituals and hexes. As a hex magician, the Glomide Queen combined the Death Bird with the serpent beliefs of Jelmir to create the Black Flame a combination of death and flame. The Great Serpent of Jelmir is known as the Immortal Great Serpent. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the serpent eats the undead herb and ushers in its first molt. In the Temple of Igle, the serpent's amnion is placed just before the skin shed by the Great Serpent. If the serpent achieves immortality by shedding its skin, then the god skin can represent the god's death. This serpent belief should be the inner logic in the technology of Glomide Queen. This is one of the sources that influenced Mesmer's own belief. Actually, except for serpents, there are other elements exhibited in Mesmer himself. Mesmer's eyes are close to the dragon eyes, a symbol of having performed a lot of dragon communions. His armor resembles in shape to the Drake Knight armor. These suggest that Mesmer himself may have partaken in dragon communion. Mesmer's weapon is embedded with various types of glint stones, 
obsidian, symbolizing the power of death, the red glint stones, representing living sacrifice and fire. The end of his spear is suspected to be inlaid with a golden glint stone. In the game's 1.0 version, the description of Helfen's steeple says, a great sword that mimicked the shape of the obsidian memorial spire in honor of the heroes beshrewed to death by the rune of life. This old man is being impaled in a similar form, which is partly in line with Mesmer's title, The Impaler. According to this page of DLC's art book, the castle owned by Mesmer should be the one located in the center of the Land of Shadow, which is built under the trees and receives the blessing due of the Shadow Tree. For the two images on the other page, one shows a bridge filled with impalement elements, and the other has a depiction of a Marika statue. And the element of receiving the blessed sap is extremely important in the plot of the base game. It was once thought that the blessed sap of the Erd tree would drip from its boughs forever, but that age of plenty swiftly came to a close. The image of Marika distributing the blessing dew at the beginning of the age of the Erd tree is on the Erd tree's favorite talisman. While this time period, the Age of Plenty, is swiftly came to a close. Probably, the reason for this period being so short was not a change in Marika's own attitude, but because she could no longer give out the Blessing Dew. The building designed to receive the Blessing Dew has been moved to the Land of Shadow, along with the tree that could drop the Dew. Mesmer then became the only Lord capable of receiving favors in the Land of Shadow. Mesmer's knights have crossed paths with other complex forces as well. In the field where the banner of the Mesmer's crest hangs, a knight wearing black and gold armor and using double-headed swords is fighting with the player. We can guess that such knights might belong to Mesmer himself. In the image released in the official website, these knights are following the wicker man. The omen horn sun hanging from it coincidentally corresponds to the belief of Dunyida. The ones burning in it were trying their best to escape outwards before they died. If we follow the features of hexes summarized above, this is clearly a hex ritual of living sacrifice. Of all the elements considered taboo by Laindal, Mesmer has dabbled in the flame and death. Then, this city highlights the element of the omen. The most obvious feature in this city is the spiral columns present everywhere. Such spiral columns appear many times in the trailer. The area of the Lion Dancer battle. Behind the heavy armored knight stroking a jar. And the scene of the Wicker Man battle. And in the area of the Dancer battle, we can see some willow-like plants. In the scene of this navy hood casting the purple butterfly incantation, the same omen lion is also shown. As well as a willow tree, suspected to be turned from the two fingers. It can be said that the omen lion should be an important cultural symbol of this city. This city is located in the oblique direction of the shadow tree, and its upper end is blackened and turning into powder, which also occurs in the shadow tree. It's worth noting that such spiral columns also appear in the base game, the Volcano Manor adding a flair of Jelmir culture to this city. The Omen Lion Dancer can summon golden lightning. Actually, in the official art book, the old lion whose horns are cut has golden lightning twisted round its blade. In the game, aside from Godwin and the capital's ancient dragon cult, only the Commander Neil, a veteran under the Storm Lord, and the Stormhawk Axe can summon the golden lightning. Sorry. Forgot the sheep of Altus Plateau could summon it too. If we consider the Omen Horns, this city could be only in relation to the Storm Lord. In any case, the most outstanding cultural feature of this city is the Omen Horns. There are such enemies with Omen Horns. The candlesticks they hold is similar in shape to the golden rune piercing the old man. The similar shape also appears on the Knights of Mesmer. Well, the people of the Land of Shadow seem to be fond of bullying foreigners. As for the old man who suffers the most in the trailer, in addition to being impaled in a special way, his cloak clasp is also special. By this clasp, we know that he is the old man in this portrait. And there is a mysterious woman standing beside him. Her hair scarf is tied in the same spiral as the curtains in the Lion Dancer scene. 
Based on the image of this scene, such shape may have come from the interleaving tree reliefs on the wall. And there is a cross tree tower shield in the base game. The interleaving tree is described as ancient in the description of tower shield. This may suggest that the Erd tree and the shadow tree existed as the interleaving trees before the land of shadow was separated from the lands between. But this point is not most important. By adjusting the tones, we can see this woman has a dark hair color, not the light hair of Marika and Maquella. So this is a new character. Although I cannot confirm her identity, here I can give you some points for your reference. The Land of Shadow documents the culture and forces that existed in the period of Marika's past. Among the most famous female characters of that era. Aside from Renala and Marika. That probably leaves the Glomide Queen. Due to the resolution and lighting of this image, it's not easy to tell what state her body is currently in. If one reads this gesture of caressing the abdomen as pregnancy, then the narrative of this drawing would be very interesting. But more information is needed for further reasoning. Based on the scenes and graphic design of this trailer, that's all the strong interrelated content we can get. We can see that, these elements of serpent, omen, death, and flame, are all what Marika overcame on her way to become a god. But, why did Maquella abandon everything to enter the land of shadow? In contrast to Runni, who abandoned her flesh body, Maquella even discarded his own destiny on this journey. As a Empyrean, discarding destiny is to some extent equivalent to giving up the order. Although Runni betrayed so many things, she still has not given up her order and her destiny. It is evident that Maquella's situation is even grimmer than Runni's. Maquella's purpose terrifies the NPC who follow him and is described as bleaching the heart of men. Bleaching human hearts in spite of everything is scary indeed. Actually, there may be some indication to the tone of DLC's story in the behavior and lines of Miquela and Mesmer. The tagline for the DLC is, Waiting for the Promised Lord. The official website's description adds the subject to this sentence, Miquela is waiting for his promised lord. It is clear that the game goal of DLC is similar to that of the base game, Be the Lord. Moreover, what Mesmer says is worthy of analysis. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? This line conveys that Mesmer's attitude toward us tarnished is contempt with a little jealousy. Mesmer despises the humble lightless one. But this lightless one has apparently been given the lordship sanction by his mother. The lightless one obviously refers to us tarnished and Mesmer calls the one who gave us the Lordship Sanction as Mother. According to the interview, we all know that Mesmer's mother is Marika. But it is Melina who supports Astonish to become the Elden Lord. Then, in this line, the identities of Marika and Melina overlap. In any case, the reason why Mesmer believes that he has not been chosen by his mother is that he saw something in Tarnish, something that could be called Marika's Mark. In the base game, Runni spotted us tarnished through the spectral steed whistle. What about Mesmer? Also, in this scene where the player with the dueling shield is caught by Mesmer, you can vaguely see the pattern on the shield. I believe you will be somewhat familiar with this pattern. Yes, this seems to be the pattern on the right side of the taker's cameo. Two snakes also appeared here. A weapon that looks similar to this pattern is the Silurias tree. This weapon is described as a spear modeled after the crucible. In this way, we can interpret the design of Taker's cameo as devouring the world. Perhaps the information about the crucible would be complemented in the DLC. According to the Famitsu interview, what happens in the Land of Shadow will not influence the endings of the base game. The story of the DLC begins and ends in the Land of Shadow. Miquela's plan is probably condemned to remain confined to the Land of Shadow. But with the final scene of the trailer, we may be able to find a clue. According to the interviews, the curtain of the Land of Shadow symbolizes that this land has been disconnected and hidden from the lands between. 
And after Miquela held out his hand, the curtain disappeared. Does this mean the isolation between the two lands will be removed? Is Miquela showing his power to Tarnished with this act? Or is he trying to get himself back into the lands between, along with the land of shadow? In the latter case, who would be the possible force to prevent him from influencing the ending? Okay, that is the main part of this video. Next will be some more fragmented analysis and thoughts. In this image, we can see such remains of the building. Called Furuideki, or ancient ruins. In the game, we can access such architecture in various locations. Ruin-strewn precipice, seaside ruins, and wailing dunes. The distribution of such remains straddles the north and south, but also down to the underground world. Which shows that these buildings had been highly distributed. Such buildings should have been built in the same time period. Of these ancient ruins, the one that most reflects the identity of their builders is the pedestal that holds up the Forge of the Flame of Ruin on the mountaintops of the Giants. Based on this use, we can assume that it was the Fire Giants who built such works. And its presence in the Land of Shadow suggests that, the Land of Shadow was indeed of being part of the lands between. This scene shows many warrior jaws and the large jaws which appear under the Erd Tree. Perhaps the DLC will explain something about the jars. At least I do recall that, in the game's network test version, the cracked part was described as, a remnant of bygone research into eternal life. In this scene where the Red Swords woman dances with the flowing swordsmanship, we can actually see some structures that resemble giant ships. Which may have a deep connection to the reliefs of your palace ruins. This scene has an obvious architectural identity of the Academy of Raya Lucaria, such as the cuckoo cages and dangling glowing glintstones on both sides. The interior layout of this place resembles the Church of the Cuckoo and the Carrion Study Hall. This new NPC's attire was close to that of the Academy Scholar in the Carrion Inverted Statue, but with differences. All of these definitely indicate that this NPC's cultural background is related to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. We've also seen many strange creatures, which demonstrate the primordial crucible of the ancient times or have connection to the death. A beast combines the features of rhino, hippopo, crocodile, and porcupine. In the underground, one maid in heaven is throwing its placenta. A knight who rides an armored boar, is using the purple power of gravity and the assortment of long worms. In this scene, there is someone who is suspected of being the Saint Trina faithful lying on the pink flower field. This person's mask seems to be worn to the back of the head. As for new weapons and new spells, like aspects of the crucible quills, bears roar incantation, repeating crossbow and aspects of the crucible wings. There are so many that I won't go through each of them. Can't wait to play the DLC on June 21st and experience them for ourselves.